In today's video, we're going to be resuming our Top Prospects series, and I have a special guest joining me to discuss the Top Prospects of the Boston Bruins, and that's coming up next. So welcome back here to Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we're going to continue our prospect series today, and I have Dylan from BNG Hockey joining me to discuss the top prospects from the Boston Bruins. Now, where I have a special guest joining me here today, the format of this video will be slightly different than the others that we've seen so far in this series. We're going to be discussing the top six prospects, so we're going to be covering three each. Now I'm going to throw things over to Dylan from BNG Hockey to kick things off. Hey there Bruins fans, it's Dylan from BNG Hockey, where it's always black and gold. Just want to say a huge thank you to Mike for having me back on the channel, and now let's jump right in with our first prospect. I'm going to start things off with the player that I'm most excited about. It's forward Jack Studnika. He's a 20-year-old right shot center coming in at 6'1". He's a 2017 second round pick selected 53rd overall. Studnika played a total of four seasons for the Oshawa Generals of the OHL. Starting off with his first season, he played 62 games, scoring 26 points. His next season, he played 64 games, scoring a total of 52 points. His third season, he was named captain. He played 66 games and scored 72 points. And last season, he played 30 games for the Oshawa Generals, scoring a total of 34 points. He was then traded in the middle of the season to the Niagara Ice Dogs, where he played another 30 games, scoring 49 points. He's represented Canada multiple times at the World Juniors, and in 2017-18, he played five AHL games, scoring a goal and four assists. Now, as I said before, I'm really excited to see what Stanika can do as a Bruin. I think he has a real shot at cracking the lineup this season, whether it be at center or at right wing. Now, in the World Juniors, he did play a majority of the time on the right side, and he's said before that if he has to make that jump to the NHL as a winger first, he's fine doing that. I could see them playing him in a top six role, maybe with a Bergeron and Marchand, just like they did with Sagan early on in his career. Playing with those two elite level guys really helps you get adjusted to the NHL life, and then later on you can switch back to your natural position of center. I do think the Bruins see this guy as a top six center of the future. He's got great playmaking ability. I think he has scoring upside. I think if you put him with a guy like David Pasternak, that could be an absolutely lethal pair. He's a great leader. As we know, he was captain. Even when he got traded, he immediately became assistant captain. So I think he could be a big part of the future core. Next up, we have Jacob Lomkow. He's originally a third round pick in 2018. Originally from the Czech Republic, he plays both the center as well as wing. He is pretty decent size, six feet tall, around 170 pounds, but he certainly could add a little bit more muscle to that frame. He played the most recent season in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League for the Ruin Naranda Huskies. Of course, as we know, the Huskies went on to become Memorial Cup champions, so that was certainly a terrific experience for him to be on Canada's National Junior Championship team. He had a pretty solid regular season, putting up 41 points in 44 regular season games, went on to play 19 games in the playoffs with Ruin Naranda, and put up 13 additional points. His biggest asset for sure has to be his skating and his speed. He has terrific acceleration, great straight line speed, and he's a real threat coming in the offensive zone off the rush. He's also very well known amongst his previous coaches of having a great attitude and strong work ethic. He certainly works really hard and is a very coachable kid. At this point in time, many have labeled him a potential third round draft steal for the Bruins. I mean, at this point, he is certainly ahead of schedule in his development. He is expected to jump to the American Hockey League for the coming season, which will certainly be a major test for him. His first pro hockey season we will certainly see how things progress for him here in the near future. Given the fact of how well he's done with everything since he's been drafted, I fully suspect this transition to go relatively smooth and he should become a key contributor for the Bruins American Hockey League affiliate for the coming year. His long-term outlook likely projects him to be like a middle six forward. He could end up being a center or a winger at the NHL. It's not quite clear as of yet. I don't really see him having top line potential. I don't really see him being a fourth liner either. I think maybe being a middle six type of forward likely where he projects to be at the NHL. His speed alone could make him a threat, especially on the penalty kill if he can work on his defensive side of the game, which could certainly add another element here to kind of make sure he makes it to the NHL. Next up, we have forward Zach Senishin. He's a 22-year-old right shot right winger. Come Coming in at six foot one, he was taken 15th overall in the first round of the infamous 2015 draft. Now, this is always a painful one if you're a Bruins fan. This was Don Sweeney's first draft in which he stockpiled three first round picks, trying to trade up for a player like Noah Hannafin, didn't end up doing it, and ended up selecting with all three picks. Now, this is an absolutely stacked draft, and the Bruins ended up getting good players from this draft. The only problem is that they didn't get 
the best players out of this draft. Players selected after Seneshin include Matthew Barzell, Kyle Connor, Brock Besser, and Thomas Shabbat. The list goes on and on and on of players who have already made the jump up to the NHL. But this does not mean that he's a total bust. He played four seasons for the Greyhounds of the OHL. In his first season, he played a total of four games, scoring two points. In his next season, he played 66 games, scoring 45 points. His third season, he was named assistant captain, played 66 games, scoring 65 points. And his final season, he played 59 games, scoring 65 points. You can see the development there. With each season, his points totals went up. He then went on to play two seasons for the Providence Bruins. First season, he played 66 games, scoring 26 points. The next season, he played the same amount of games, 66, but got two less points with 24. He did play two games for the Boston Bruins last season. In his first game, he ended up scoring a goal. He didn't have to beat a goalie to do so, but hey, a lot of us would take an empty netter. He still has an NHL goal. In his second game, he played against the Tampa but Bay Lightning, he was a minus one. In the Minnesota Wild game, he had a lot of chances, so it was really great seeing him get that empty netter because he had a couple opportunities that I thought he was gonna beat a goalie for his first NHL goal, and he was not afraid to throw his weight around. At 6'1", he's not the biggest guy, but he plays a lot bigger than that. I was really excited to see him make that jump, and in the Tampa Bay game, he was a minus one, but again, he didn't look out of place. So overall, I think it's safe to say that Zach Seneshin is never gonna be as good as Matthew Barzell but it doesn't mean that pick is a total waste. I do see him making the jump to the Bruins lineup at some point, hopefully next season. I see him being a third, maybe a second line forward. I think he's a power forward with a good amount of speed, some offensive upside, absolutely. If he makes that jump and plays with some good players, maybe with a Charlie Coyle who has a similar style to him, I could see him being a solid NHL guy. Next up, we have Trent Frederick, a 2016 first round selection. He's got a great size, six foot two, 200 pounds. He's a left shot center Riceman who came from the University of Wisconsin, played two solid college hockey seasons before turning pro last year, had 55 games in the American Hockey League for the Providence Bruins, got called up to the NHL and managed to play 15 games. And even though he didn't register any points, he made an impression right away with his willingness to drop the gloves. He had his first NHL fight already. He certainly has the size to play with a lot of tenacity, a lot of aggressiveness, and that certainly showed early on in the first few games he was with the Bruins. Now, Frederick doesn't have the high-end offensive abilities. He's certainly not likely ever going to be a first-line player. I think the odds of him even being a top-six forward are probably slim, but he has the defensive awareness, the hard work and tenacity to likely be a really solid number three or number four center at the NHL level. Like I said, you're not going to get a ton of points out of him, but he should prove to be very valuable on special teams, especially on the penalty kill. Should also be very responsible on the face-off circle and take draws in his own end when it matters most, those types of games. Those type of moments in the games is certainly where he's going to excel. But I do think he needs probably another year of seasoning in the American Hockey League to try to really have a really excellent shot at earning a regular everyday position with the Bruins. Next up, we have defenseman Earl Vakaninen. He's a 20-year-old left shot D coming in at 6-1. He was taken 18th overall in the first round of the 2017 draft. He's represented his country of Finland multiple times in all sorts of world junior tournaments and international tournaments. He's won two gold and one silver and putting up points along the way. Last season with the Providence Bruins, he played 30 games, scoring four goals, 10 assists for a total of 14 points. He was called up for two NHL games last season. His first was against the Vancouver Canucks in which he played 12 minutes and was a minus one. His second was against the Ottawa Senators in which he only played five minutes before getting a vicious elbow to the head from defenseman Mark Borowiecki of the Ottawa Senators. Borowiecki was suspended one game for this, but sadly Vakaninen was concussed and was out for a little over a month and never was called back up to the Bruins. Never really got that chance again. Now the Bruins didn't just forget about one of their top defensive prospects after he got injured, but I do think Bruce Cassidy was playing it safe even in his first NHL game against the Vancouver Canucks. He only played 12 minutes, a majority of those were offensive starts, really sheltering the 20-year-old D-man. And then after he got injured, I think they they didn't want to risk calling him back up. I think that they realized that maybe he's not quite ready and give him a little more time to get seasoned, play in the playoffs for the Providence Bruins, and any more experience that this kid gets will help him. He's really talented offensively, has played against older players in Finland already, so I think he's going to make that jump maybe as soon as next season and be a really big guy for the Bees. He's one of those offensive defensemen who can put up points offensively but not sacrifice the defensive job 
job of being a defenseman. He can play big minutes. He's a smooth skater, elite level playmaker with a great first pass, a great shot. I see him slotting right next to Charlie McAvoy on the left side and being an elite level D pair for us for years to come. And last but not least here we have 2019 first round selection John Beecher. Now, John Beecher came from the United States National Team Development Program, but to be honest, I felt he kind of flied under the radar a little bit because of the team was just so deep and so stacked. I mean, it was headlined by guys like Jack Hughes, Cole Caulfield, Trevor Zegras, Alex Turcott, and others who went really high in this draft. But oftentimes, he didn't get that much of attention just because that other, the rest of the team was so deep and had so much more star power that sometimes he was overlooked. And when you hear a lot about the top prospects that could likely go in the first round, it wasn't that common that you really heard his name discussed. But he has terrific size, six foot three, 209 pounds, and he gets around the ice incredibly well. I know at Bruins Development Camp, they were especially impressed with his speed, and I think speed is definitely what defines his game. He's an incredibly strong skater who can use that size and skill down the ice and is very dangerous off the rush. Beecher has committed to going to the University of Michigan, so he's likely going to play at least one, probably two, maybe more years of U.S. college hockey. So it's certainly difficult to say when exactly he turns pro, but there's really no pressure on him to do that. At this point, the Boston Bruins, as we know, had a really deep run in the playoffs they have a very deep forward group a great team there's certainly no need to rush him to the nhl obviously a lot of these other guys we talked about in this video here today very well might have an opportunity to make it sooner because they're a little closer whereas he can play college hockey take his time develop them properly and see if he can make the nhl maybe in two or three years time his combination of speed size and puck control and his willingness to drive hard to the net certainly give him an edge to become an nhl player possibly as a power forward type of role it's certainly within his makeup that that seems likely that that's what he could turn out to be when the time is right here. So we'll follow Beach's progress here at the University of Michigan for the next couple of years, and we'll see how things turn out for him when he's ready to jump to the NHL. So those are your top six prospects. Of course, I want to thank Dylan from BNG Hockey for coming on and making his contribution to this video. Certainly appreciate it. If you're not already familiar and subscribe to his channel, he's making some great Bruins content and you won't be disappointed. Of course, as always, we want to hear your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section what you think of these Bruins prospects. Let us know which ones you're most excited about and which players you think will have the biggest impact on this franchise moving forward. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. We still have plenty more teams to cover in the Prospect Series, so stay tuned. There'll be plenty more coming soon. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you next time.